In search of has investigated the mystery of many ancient monuments, the pyramids, Stonehenge, and Easter Island. A solution to these puzzles may be concealed in Florida's Coral Castle. This monumental structure was created by one man with his bare hands in the 20th century. What strange forces created this castle of secrets? This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Coral Castle has been called the eighth wonder of the world. This place is a fantasy garden and an engineering marvel. The blocks are cut and set with great precision, locked without mortar. At 30 tons, the greatest single stone in Coral Castle is twice as massive as any in the pyramids. Here are massive megaliths, huge astrological symbols, and structures whose purpose is a total mystery. Surprisingly, 25 miles away is cosmopolitan Miami. Coral Castle was built not in ancient times, but in the 20th century. Most curious of all, Coral Castle was built in secret by one man, Edward Leedskalman, a frail little hermit. With no modern machinery and with no help, he somehow hand-carved and lifted every single block, a total of three million pounds. With all our modern technology, we might be able to duplicate the pyramids, but how could we ever do it with our bare hands? Dreamers beyond the fringe of science have postulated a long-lost art of harnessing anti-gravity. It seems incredible, but Ed Leedskalnen may have rediscovered these ancient secrets. Let's look at his life story. The mystery of Coral Castle began in rural South Florida just after World War I. Settlers and land speculators began to move down from the East Coast, displacing the indigenous Seminole Indians. The newcomers found a humid, sprawling tropical land full of mosquitoes and opportunities. The great Florida land boom was on. In 1919, as recreated here, a real estate man named Moser was scouting land along back roads near the Everglades. He spotted a stranger. At first, he thought it was a boy and was surprised to encounter a very small, grown man. The stranger couldn't weigh more than 90 pounds. Moser, always friendly, offered a ride. The little man introduced himself, Edward Leedskow. Recently immigrated from Latvia, he said with a smile was searching this part of Florida for a specific plot of land. Moser realized the little man had advanced tuberculosis. Mrs. Moser always welcomed the strangers her husband brought home. Life was lonely in this new land. Edward Leedskalnen was very friendly, very polite, and confessed outright he hadn't a penny to his name.
the Mosers selflessly took young Ed into their home and nursed him back to health. They listened with respect to his story of leaving Latvia, of his search all over America for the right type of land. I'll know when I find it, he said. It's for my sweet 16. He would never explain who she was, but Ed was obviously haunted by a dream or a memory of land and a castle for his sweet 16. As soon as he regained his health, Ed continued searching the backcountry. Crazy Ed and his rusty bike became the butt of many local jokes. Neighbors, watching him prod the ground, began rumors that he was hunting for buried treasure. Ed always rejected the good farmland. When people wondered why, he only smiled. Finally, he excitedly brought Moser to a remote plot. Moser was astounded, for Ed had unerringly located the worst acre in the state. It was all bedrock, right up to the surface. You couldn't plow it, you couldn't farm it. Moser gladly gave a small section to his friend. A few weeks later, Moses' curiosity got the better of him. He dragged his wife out through the brush to see what Ed could possibly do with that land. They couldn't believe their eyes. Ed had somehow cut a 10-ton block of solid coral right out of the bedrock and hoisted it into the air. As they nervously approached his flimsy tripod and the block which could crush them in an instant, they realized there was something more than craziness in Ed. How did he do it? Ed smiled and said, it's not difficult really. The secret is in knowing how. Why did he do it? He smiled again. Someday, my sweet 16, will come. Working alone, he cut more blocks. All the locals had to visit and gape at this accomplishment. Ed was friendly, but firm. He would never tell his secret techniques, and he would always stop work when people came near. Trying to catch him at work, the neighbors took to spying. Some people swear they saw the rocks move. Ed could somehow sense their inquiring gaze. He would simply stop working and patiently wait until they gave up trying to discover his secrets. Sixty years later, the completed coral castle still embodies a number of unsolved mysteries. Francis Wilson. This block weighs nine ton. It's just one piece of rock. See what you can do with one hand? quite interested in safety, I know that, and he always wanted to make sure the children couldn't get, couldn't get down in here, and that was his gate to keep children from going down the steps. Those who knew Ed remember him with great respect. Charles Williams and Bodil Lowe. I guess I was maybe six, seven years old. I was born and raised about 300 yards from this place, and uh, I would see Ed quite often at the little country store we had, and he was a very slight man. I don't think he was probably any taller than I am. I'm about five, six. 
probably weighed somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 pounds. He always looked frail and sickly, but obviously very strong. He'd say he, uh, this is because of the stars and the moon, and he would go on and he would show us his electrical machine now. He made electricity. And he would jump in his bathtub and show how the, the water would come to certain levels and how he heated it with the sun. And he'd always divert your question. As I say, a very gentle, kind person. And he was, of course, highly intelligent. Uh, many people thought uh, he was a little cracked because uh, he was smarter, I think, than they were, probably. His whole life and whole being was very frugal. Just sustained himself, I think, more or less. And some nights we'd come in the moonlight and sit and walk around in his park. And he would come out and tell us his story if he had a small audience. And he would go along in a very normal sort of a voice. And then we'd ask him why he did it. And they'd say, oh, well, someday my sweet 16 is coming. And he'd look up in the stars. And he would get very ethereal in his voice. And he just uh, loved talking about his sweet 16. And he always spoke of her as sweet 16. She never grew any older. It's kind of nice. There were many rumors about mysterious Ed. One held that he was an eccentric miser and kept a stash of money. Late one evening in the 1930s, a band of toughs waited until he was alone in Coral Castle. Little Ed could never have imagined such a shocking intrusion into his private world. prompted the most extraordinary feat of his life. Coral Castle was originally built in a remote area of Florida. For years, Ed Lee Scalman felt safe in isolation, away from the harsh realities of the cities. He had carved this place with his bare hands as a Shangri-La for his sweet 16. Barely surviving a brutal robbery, however, Ed decided to seek safer ground. When he moved, Ed took more than his toothbrush. He took Coral Castle itself. He hired a local truck owner and with characteristic secrecy, politely asked the man to step around the corner. The truck would be loaded in just a minute. Piece by piece, Ed moved all three million pounds of rock 10 miles to its present location near Homestead, Florida. As usual, no one ever managed to see how he lifted the giant rocks, which weighed up to 30 tons apiece. How did he do it? There are many theories. 60 million years ago, this was all of South Florida thousands of miles of living coral reef. The rock which he used, fossil coral, may have internal forces which only Ed understood. A huge brain coral seems almost conscious, perhaps contemplating ancient secrets. Living coral constructs its own undersea castles. Forces deep in the earth fuse dead coral into oolite, a dense, strong, organic rock. And most of South Florida has little topsoil over this bedrock. We asked the men at a rock quarry to try an experiment, to cut and lift a giant block of oolite. With diamond-tipped power saws, the cutting alone took several hours. The only way to break the block free brute force. Then, 
the test. Could they detect any unusual buoyancy in the rock itself? Using a 600 horsepower crane, could they lift the rock? almost tipped over, they managed to drag the block a few yards. What modern equipment would it take to duplicate Coral Castle? It could, couldn't be done. Charles Valois comments. Not with the modern equipment. I wouldn't cut more than four foot long and 32 inches wide and seven or eight foot long. That's the most I'll cut. And you see the struggle I have getting it out with that machine. This is the only known photo of Ed apparently working. Although he seems to be breaking the block free with wedges, a close look reveals that the block is already cut free with a cable underneath. Engineers have been puzzled by this photo. Bruce Cathy has extensively studied and written on Earth forces. He believes that a harmonic grid inside the Earth's surface can create actual anti-gravity at certain nodes on the grid, and that Coral Castle was built on a position of harmonic resonance. He's moved stones up to uh, coral blocks up to 25 tons, and uh, he'd put them up overnight just on his own. After he died, I checked some of the instruments he was using, and they're very, very primitive. Chisels and hammers and uh, ropes and pulleys and things. Nobody can understand even today now how he done this. I found when I applied the harmonic mathematical um, basis to his position on the Earth's surface geometrically, that the same harmonic values popped up on the area where he was. He always said that he had the secrets of anti-gravity and magnetic fields, and he also said that he knew how they built the pyramids. So it appears if he was telling the truth that um, it looks like he did have these secrets. Ed performed many strange experiments with magnetism, although he had no source of conventional electricity. He hinted to neighbors he was on the verge of a monumental breakthrough and published his preliminary results. His book, however, is as incomprehensible as Einstein's unified field theory. Just as Ed always worked in secret, he also preferred to take his own photographs, posing in his one suit with a self-timed box brownie. These films are not the best quality, but they are the only known movies of Ed Leedskalman. They were discovered in 1980 in the back of a closet. They reveal the Ed that most visitors knew. Animated, friendly, a simple man. With this same simplicity, Ed awoke one morning in December of 1951. He put on his one suit, hopped a bus, and checked into Miami's county hospital. The doctors were appalled to find him near death from malnutrition. For a while, he rallied under their care and then died quietly in his sleep. Even after his death, Ed left a few surprises. Neighbors guarded the grounds until authorities could make an official investigation.
They found his living quarters as spartan and as ingenious as the rest of Coral Castle. also found $3,800 in crisp $100 bills and what resembled a treasure map. All attempts to follow the directions on the map were futile. Nothing seemed to correspond to our normal three-dimensional geometry. Ed left many mysteries, a lot of money, and a castle for his sweet 16. Was she a real person? Or was she a dream, an ideal of all that is good? Children love to visit Coral Castle. They instinctively respond to the childlike sense of play which is so magnificently sculpted here. In his life, Edward Leed Scalman carved and lifted over three million pounds of rock. Yet there is one small stone weighing 50 pounds, which he never managed to lift. Ironically, on both sides of his simple grave in Miami are the graves of two little children. We think he would have felt at home. 